describe my feelings as inexplicable, intangible, indescribable. Because in three weeks, I'm going to graduate. In three weeks, I probably won't ever set foot in a, in a classroom again. In three weeks, I probably won't have to listen to a professor speak at a lecture again. It's a, it's a very exciting experience. So, here's my story. What I've learned in the past four years at Rutgers is that it doesn't matter how talented you are, it, it, it doesn't matter how smart you are, and it, and it certainly doesn't matter where you come from. Opportunity comes and goes, and it's up to you to grab it. So tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give all of you two bits of advice. The first bit of advice is to go to class. <laughs> and some of you are lucky enough to have a good professor, someone who, when you walk in halfway through the the lecture, you're, stable, you're still able to understand everything he says. But for most of us, we're on the opposite end of the spectrum. When, when you daze out for one or two minutes, you lose track of what's going on. So many of you are wondering, why would I want to go to a class like that? Well, I'll tell you my answer. I go to class because, not necessarily because I want to listen to a professor keep talking about who knows what, but I, I go to socialize. And it's not socialize in a bad sense, but really, I want to be around successful people. I want to be around my peers. Because being around my peers, being around successful people, makes me want to be successful. I believe that's the true value of a college education. Being successful is a culture. And to be a part of that culture, you have to go to class. <laughs> so my second piece of advice to all of you underclassmen is to get an internship. Internships provide real world experience. It's not going to class listening to a lecture, taking notes, studying, and then passing an exam? No. In the real world, your problems are open-ended. There's no answer key. And if it were so easy to use Google, you probably wouldn't have been hired. <laughs> so, how do you get an internship? You have to get good at interviewing. This year, before I got my first job offer, I applied to 50 companies, and I think I've interviewed for, I've had at least 25 interviews overall. And from all that experience, I just want to say that, number one, the basics, be prepared, be prepared for the common behavioral questions. One question that I've always been asked is, Say you, I hire you, and, and, and you're working here, but one year down the line, a better company comes and asks you to interview. What do you do? Now, that's a tough question to answer. My, my answer, which I've thought over and over again, and I've prepared for this for multiple interviews, is that I want to be part of a team that solves problems. And if I'm ever bored of my team, or I want to solve different problems, I can switch to another team in the company. And the only reason why I would leave a company is if I get bored, if I feel that I'm not learning enough, and, and that I don't feel like I'm growing as a person. And at that point, it's better for you and the company to depart ways. But, with any interview, your number one priority is to sell yourself. Why do you want this job? Why should the company hire you? What skills, what do you bring 
to the, the table? And most importantly, why should they hire you or the guy or girl behind you? But one last thing. An interview is a two-way conversation. They want to know why they you want to they want to know why they should hire you, but you also know you also want to know why you want to work there. So it's very important for you to have a list of questions because you don't want to start working at a job that you hate. So those are my two tips. Go to class. We're trying to get an internship. So that's the end. I'm graduating, and I feel a lot of regret. I regret that I didn't make the grade more than once. I regret that I didn't work hard enough on my projects, and I had to have, have my team cover my slack. And most of all, I regret not getting more involved in Rutgers. They always have that saying, get involved. And now it finally clicks. Rutgers is a place of opportunity. It's so big, and there's so much to do. But in order to do something, you have to go out and find it. And I'm glad that I found Toastmasters. And I'm glad that I came here consistently. And although I've made a lot of mistakes, Toastmasters has helped me develop as a person. And, and really, anything you do, what you, you get out what you put in. And I can say for sure that if there's one thing that Toastmasters has helped me do, it's made me become a more sociable person. So I want to thank all of you here today for making my Toastmasters experience amazing. It's been an honor. <laughs>